Dear brethren, welcome to the studio of the Sabbath School Department by the General Conference. With the help of the Lord, we have a new Sabbath School lesson to present for you. I'm sorry I will be alone this evening again, and I'm working on the new technology in our studio so I can connect more of our leading brethren to work with me on the Sabbath School lessons from different countries. But uh, it is in process and I think that soon we can achieve this goal. <clears throat> Today we have a very important lesson, Preparation for the Letter Rain, Part 1. We're going to have Part 2 and Part 3. This is a very important topic about the Letter Rain and I think each one of you is very interested to know more about this important subject related to our prophecy, related to our future, related to our daily life today <clears throat> and the preparation for it. Let's have a, a silent prayer before we begin studying our lesson in depth. Amen. <clears throat> As usual we need to do a short summary on our lesson. <clears throat> we have introduction in connection with the previous lesson with uh, this introduction uh, testimony, excuse me, and then we have the gift of the Holy Spirit as a first undertitle <coughs> that explain again <coughs> what the importance of this gift. And let's not forget that we have talked about the early reign, the Pentecostal, but now uh, the experience of the Pentecostal, but today we're going to talk about another a measure of the Holy Spirit and this is the letter rain and as well as the early rain so also the letter rain they have different functions and that's why it's very important to understand the importance of preparation of that letter rain why is that so important we're going to see all during all these three different Sabbath school lessons but today we will talk about the preparation what is the gift of the Holy Spirit and why is that so important that this gift, the letter rain, actually come upon us? <clears throat> the perfect unity is the second under title and it has to do with the preparation actually for the letter rain. And we are going to see that actually the most important part of this lesson is in this topic, the preparation of the unity of the church and the conditions which are necessary that we fulfill in order to obtain this enormous power, the fullness of the Spirit. The last under title is the consecration, faith and sincerity and this is also related to the preparation of the letter rain as it is in the title. Let's go now with the help of the Lord to the details of the Sabbath School lesson and we will roll back to the first question. <coughs> The first question says, what desire should every believer have? And uh, it is very general questions and I'm sure that uh, many of our members and visitors in the Sabbath School, they can be easily distracted and they can go in different other subjects and topics, but we need to guide gently in the line of the subject of our lesson. <clears throat> and we have here uh, one Bible verse, and uh, actually two Bible verses. The first one is in Psalm uh, 143, <clears throat> and there are some indication to each translation. And the second one is the Second Kings. <clears throat> the first Bible verse in Psalm 143 see, speaks about the, one very important uh, a condition of the preparation of the letter rain and this is the obedience to the Word of God and to the Spirit. Not only obedience but uh, we see that this Bible was actually ask the guidance of the Spirit. So we need to not only desire to have the Spirit but we need to desire that He guide us. We need to desire to be obedient, to submit under the impression and the, under the power of the Holy Spirit. If we are not willing to do so, obviously there will be no reason for the Spirit to come upon us. <clears throat> now, there is another topic in the other Bible verse that's uh, what we need to desire is the double portion of the Spirit and that's the experience of Elisha 
that was departing of Elijah and he says ask whatever you want and it will be given to you and he asked the double portion so he was not only willing to obey not just willing to follow the uh, guidance of the spirit but he wanted to have a double portion he wanted to have a special measure the fullness of the spirit and this is very important because as I already mentioned we have the early rain and it's most likely we all have a certain portion of the early rain otherwise we will not be converted but that is not the fullness yet we can grow even more and we're going to see this in during the Sabbath school lesson so one of the conditions to obtain the letter rain is that we will not satisfy with a measure of the spirit which we have with the power that we have with the knowledge that we have but we shall always strive and ask and and do our best so that we can obtain a, a double portion a bigger portion of the Holy Spirit the same as the servant of God also desire let's go now to the question number two and we're going to see here what is the Lord willing to give to those who ask him with all their hearts for whom did Jesus ask the daily baptism of his spirit uh, we have one Bible verse here in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall the Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him in this Bible verse there are two things that I at least uh, have been very much impressed from the first one is God called us evil or God called those who uh, to whom he speaks evil and obviously thinking about our evil nature fallen and tendencies of sin and um, uh, the, the, the terrible conditions sinful conditions in which we are obviously compared to God we are evil despite of that God says you are evil but you you can give a good gift to your children and if you ask God will give you the spirit which means that we shall not expect first to become good and then to obtain the spirit of God it is the other way around we are evil and that's why we need the spirit so that we become good we become good not because we're good but because the good spirit of God enter into us and begin guiding us that's the only way we can become good and despite of that that we have mistakes errors and sins God can still give us the Holy Spirit remember that the disciples when they were uh, receiving the Spirit the 70 of them and they could pull out even evil spirits they uh, Peter was not yet converted he would convert much later when he received the early rain the, another bigger measure of the Holy Spirit so that's why there is no obstacle really to stop and say no no I'm not ready to ask for the Holy Spirit I better wait that I become perfect that I overcome all my mistakes and errors then I will ask for the Spirit that's not the way that God have established in our spiritual growing it's the, exactly the opposite we need to ask the Holy Spirit every single day and as it says here in the second question actually <clears throat> Jesus Christ also asked daily uh, a baptism of the Holy Spirit and this is here right in the first uh, um, testimony <clears throat> Christ was continually receiving from the Father that he made communicate to us not for himself but for others he lived and taught and prayed and the second testimony says since this is in the <clears throat> means by which we are to receive power why do we not hunger and thirst for the gift of the spirit and that's very important brothers and sisters that we do for the daily baptism of the spirit every worker shall offer his petition to God 
this is very important to be understood it's not just one time early rain then let the rain and in between is nothing no it is a daily baptism of the Holy Spirit we're going to speak a little bit more about this furthermore in our lesson in question number three and four what condition make it possible for the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit and what did they do while they requested the power of Christ uh, had promised <clears throat> that that Christ have promised well uh, we see that uh, there are several things that they did and this is all the way until the end of the lesson but especially the question number three is under the under title the perfect unity and uh, here is where we have in Acts of the Apostles actually the Apostle and their friends and the women and the servants and everybody that were there in the house sitting together praying confessing their sins and waiting for the Spirit of God and in that um, condition of waiting in that condition of uh, longing for the fulfillment of the of the promise of God happened something very impressive and this was the perfect unity among themselves they abandoned their uh, desire of supremacy all their selfishness actually um, withdrew from them obviously this is not a work of a man this is a work of the Spirit of God for uh, in its measure at that moment but then is where of course a bigger portion of the Spirit come upon them. This unity among the disciples and the unity that is expected from us is not just uh, apparently unity or unity based on good education although it's not bad to have the good education and good manners but here is something much deeper than that in 1st Corinthians it comes into the details now beseech your brethren by the name of our Lord that you all speak the same thing and this is very important it's uh, unity not only unity that there is no straving and not fighting and not supremacy or desire of supremacy but there is speaking one thing means unity in doctrine unity in understanding of scriptures unity in the understanding of the plan of salvation and I think we need to um, desire more and more about this and actually the Sabbath school lesson is one of the tools that can unite us to one understanding united understanding of the scriptures and we need to follow and to grasp this uh, gift uh, that the Lord have given to us let's go now to question number four and see what's more or how this unity have been achieved and we see here <clears throat> what should the church specialists strive for we see that it's not just optional uh, things uh, the church maybe can be united maybe cannot be united and many times we uh, try to compare ourselves with the church in apostolic time and say well all the time there have been some problems and some difficulties and that's not different today so we let's calm down take it easy you know uh, nothing special have taken place but that is not what the Lord actually desire from his church the Romans chapter 15 say, 6 says that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God uh, even the Father our Lord Jesus Christ so it is not an option it is our duty to be united it is our uh, the, the world is expecting this uh, testimony according to the prayer of Jesus Christ remember John uh, chapter 17 speaks about that so even in the Ephesians chapter 4 or he writes to the Ephesians this message also very uh, strongly admonishing them <clears throat> therefore the prisoner there will beseech you that you walk worldly of the vocation resident you are called uh, it is not 
is only a, a good advice, it's not just a good desire, it is a responsibility for the church. And we need to understand that, brothers and sisters, we need to pray for the unity. The testimony says here, <clears throat> maybe we pray and we don't see a result and we should continue asking faith for the promised blessing and it will come. I don't know how long we need to wait, I don't know how long we need to pray, but we need to pray earnestly. We need to take that very seriously as the, the disciples took it. We need to assign days of prayer and fasting for the unity of the church. We need to work also to find out which are the differences and to, to finalize all the differences, to uh, uh, eliminate the differences of understanding. <clears throat> and that's how the Lord will pour upon us not only a blessing, but bigger blessing that we have already received. Going forwards to the next question, we're going to see now the personal input to the whole thing. And what other conditions need to be placed uh, <clears throat> for the Lord to grant His people's petition? And we have two Bible verses here. In Romans chapter 12 says, No slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Three things. No slothful in business means that uh, we, should not, uh, we should not be lazy. We should not be the one that does nothing. Because uh, as you remember the previous lesson says the Spirit is given to work to give a blessing to others. If we're lazy, if we do nothing, obviously what for is the Holy Spirit going to come upon us? Fervent in the Spirit means we need to be obedient to the Spirit and not so only obedient but if we hear the voice of God, if we sense the movement of the Spirit, we need to be fervent to run, to obey, to jump in into fulfillment of the desire of God and serving the Lord is the last very important point if we are not serving the, the Lord if we do not know yet what is my mission in this church if I don't know yet who am I and why God have called me here which are the gifts that he have given to me and what shall I develop and in which portion of the work of God I have to work uh, you know, there are many different ways of doing missionary work, not just going in the street and like the pastors preaching at the pulpit. There are many <coughs> ways. There are prayer meetings. You can pray. You can have a, a prayer list and follow up. You can give donations to the church so that some other can work for, uh, for the Lord. If you're somehow hindered and you cannot do it, there are many, many, many ways, but you must know what God wants from you, what the Spirit of God really wants you to do. And this is part of the early rain. That's not the latter rain. We have to find that. We need to follow that. Be fervent in the Spirit. We'll, we need to be already serving the Lord so that we can receive the latter rain. We need to first receive the early rain then we can expect we can receive a bigger portion afterwards. <clears throat> and this is also in the first Corinthians. Therefore, my beloved Brian, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding the work in <clears throat> abounding, abiding in the work of the Lord. <clears throat> As you, you can see again, it's very much underlined from Apostle Paul the involvement in the work of the church and uh, that's very important if we are members in the church we're not supposed just to expect the pastor to do certain work or maybe the bible worker the deacons they have to do their work and i can do nothing i just go and enjoy the sermon and that's it that's not what the bible say we need to find out which my place is and what the lord wants me to do to become a servant of the Lord, to become a servant of the church. Let's go to question number six. 
What other factor is essential to receive the gift of the Spirit and what measure will the Holy Spirit be receiving? A very interesting question. It is very difficult also to measure the measurements of the Holy Spirit and how much we can receive it. But Matthew chapter 21 22 says, And all things, whatsoever you shall ask and pray, believe it and you shall receive it. So one of the, uh, the first sort of the very important condition of receiving the Spirit of God and bigger power is to believe it. Not just to ask. It's like James says, if you shall not be double-minded. We need to be steadfast. We need to be obedient to the Spirit and we need to know what we're doing and we need to have the experience of receiving the answers of our prayers. 1 Corinthians says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in what? In the power of God. So we need to not only have the theory of the truth, learn the Sabbath school lessons, read the Bible, but we need to experience the power of God. We need to have the experience that we pray and God answer the prayer. We ask for somebody and God intervene and cure him or, or do some miraculous uh, appearance. We need to have this experience in our life, each one of us. In Hebrew chapter 11, 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him if we don't believe that he exists. If we don't have the experience with the living God in front of us, well, that will be perhaps a, a way to go. A way to go before we receive the letter rain. Because the letter rain is given for the end of the work. It is actually given for the harvest, just in the, before the harvest, just to ripe the fruits. But the fruits of the Spirit must be already there. We need to be not only converted, but we need to have all these gifts of the Spirit which Apostle Paul is talking about. And we need to work with them so that we be a blessing for others. And when we do, though, when we do that, then we're going to receive, of course, the blessing and the refreshment of God and we can receive the letter rain. Let's go forwards to the last questions, actually. What may we expect if we call on the Lord and truth with a desire to receive the Holy Spirit? Why may we expect? It's incredible, the question, and it's also very incredible, the answer. Psalm, again, 145 says, The Lord is near to all them that call on Him, to all that call in Him in truth. Where is God? Far away? No, He is very near. Actually, God desire, the whole heaven desire to give us the, the greatest portion of the Holy Spirit ever given and possible to be given. The only uh, difficulties in this case is that sometimes we do not desire it. Or maybe we say we desire it, but deep in our heart we're afraid. Maybe we, we even pray that God give us the Holy Spirit, but somehow we don't believe that we're going to receive it. And uh, these obstacles are the stones, the stumbling stones that are disturbing us to come closer to the Lord. <clears throat> Here it's very important the uh, testimony to Jesus whom uh, emptied himself for the salvation of lost humanity. The Holy Spirit was given without measure. So it will be given to every follower of Christ when the whole heart is surrendered for his unwilling. And dwelling. <clears throat> what that means brothers and sisters enormous portion of the Spirit is prepared for us. Enormous portion of blessing is waiting for us. 
sometimes people say, well, it's perhaps a long time to wait until the latter rain will be poured out. Maybe it's not yet here. Well, Sister White says we live in the time of the latter rain. But that's not really the most important topic. The most important topic now is that every single day I need to receive the portion of the Spirit I need for the day. Every single day I can receive bigger portion and become more and more powerful in the Spirit. That is the point. If God wants to give me the early or the later rain, that is His responsibility. This is His privilege to give to us. But my responsibility and my privilege is to ask every single day the portion I need. My dear brothers and sisters, be in good courage. The Lord has prepared for you a very special gift. The gift of the Spirit. And the same way as we have here in the picture a very heavy heaven of rain. And I know that every one of us when they see these pictures they know it will rain. And I think that is how we should feel. We need to, we need to sense the desire of heaven to share the rain with us. To give us His Spirit. Let's pray for the Spirit. Let's long for Him. And God will surely give it to us. The Lord bless you my brothers and sisters. And with the help of the Lord we can see each other next week. Amen.